Greetings to us, my Century 8 Galaxy Kingdom. It's Essential Man here. So, this is my review of ECW's Super Summer Sizzler 1993. Before we get to the review of the show, I know you're thinking I reviewed the show last year on this channel. Yes, I did. Um, the original review of the show is no longer on this channel because I deleted it. I think delete all my reviews of the original ECW instead of ECW One Night Stand 2005. It's not part of the original ECW that's under the WWE umbrella. Um, the reason why I deleted it, because I want to start it again from scrap. Because the original format is just reviewing just the pay-per-views first, then the Super Show. And then I found more Super Shows on the network. And then I kind of like, oh man, I, I, I fucked up. I wish that I'd just start all all over again from the very beginning to it fair to the not say a bitter end, but to the very end, um, I'm gonna start from 1993 all the way to 2001. The f you know the first show you know I'm gonna talk about is Super Summer Sizzler, and the final show of the original ECW was Guilty as Charged 2001 before the company went under in 2001. So I'm gonna start from scrap again over those eight years for the next couple of months. You know, start from scrap. It's just what it is, anyway. And they've been doing these shows since 1992. Unfortunately, you can't find 1992 ECW shows. It's very hard, unless you find it on DVD or on YouTube. It's just what it is. Um, you can't find more of the 1993 ECW shows. I'm talking about like the the super shows. There's more super shows in ECW in 1993. Unfortunately, it's very hard. So the only two ECW 1993 Super Shows are this show, Super Summer Sizzler, and Ultra Class. That's the next show I'm going to review on this channel. Um, it's just what it is. Anyway, so Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular. This is the one and only show in ECW's history, the original ECW history. You know, because it's basically it's the predecessor to Heat Wave. Heat Wave is basically... The answer to a SummerSlam or a Bash of the Beach for the company. Um, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot of summer theme shows in pro wrestling. You know, like back, I think back in the 90s, you got like SummerSlam, Bash of the Beach, Heat Wave, and now you just, just got SummerSlam. I always like one, one of these days, um, AEW do like a summer theme pay per view. Unfortunately, they're not going to do a pay per view in the summer. Because the next pay-per-view will be all out of this year. That'll be in September. Anyway, let's get back to my review of Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular 1993. At the Philadelphia... Not, not Philadelphia. It's in Philadelphia. It's at the ECW Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On the 19th of June, 1993. The attendance for the show was 650. Because the ECW Arena in Philly... Is a small arena compared to, you know, they end up doing big arenas. Great example, they do their shows at the Hammerstein Ballroom in later years. But um, the always ECW pay-per-view super shows, they're always doing small arenas because they don't have the financial resources as WCW or WWS slash WWE. It's just what it is. So anyway, so the commentators for this show is rotatable, you know. You got Jay Sully, if that's his name. My first impression of Jay Sully, he sounded like Eric Bischoff throughout the whole show, you know. It's just what it is. Um, they rotate like comic commentators, like they it was like Paulie Dangerously, you know, aka Paul Heyman, to Terry Funk, to Todd Gordon, who's basically the co-owner of the original ECW, and also Joey Styles. Uh, the one match is not on the network show, um, you know, the network first shoot off the show. It's uh, Donnie Allen versus Hervé Renesto, if that is his name. And I found it on Wikipedia, and I'll go, you know, it's a quick result. The match ended in a non-contest, a shame that you never get the full show on the network. It's just what it is. It's, like I say, it's very hard to find it. Anyway, so the first match to kick off... Super Summer Spectacular, sorry, Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular 1993. We got the ECW Television Championship match. We got Superfly Jimmy Snucker taking on JT Smith. 
JT Smith will be a future member of the FBI. That'll be in later years. Uh, the match was okay. Wasn't a fantastic opener. Wasn't terrible. It was basically a thumb in the middle match. Uh, the bulk of the match, you had Jimmy Snucker working uh, the leg of JT Smith, you know, doing the the um, the chop block into JT uh, G's ne uh, knees, work on the knees. Um, you had to like JT, uh, JT Smith, this is going to be very confusing, but JT Smith basically trying to roll up uh, Snucker for the win, but instead, I think it was a cradle or small package. Snooker kit out. In the end, Snooker hit the um the Superfly splash for the win. Like I said, it was an okay match. Nothing special. Never spectacular. The pacing was a bit slower. This is throughout the whole show. It's going to be a little bit... The pace could be slower. Not boring, but it's going to be a bit slower. It's just what... It's not really a fast-paced show. Anyway, the opener was just what it is. So move on to the next match. Uh, the next match we got a first blood match. We got Larry Winters taking on what's his name? Tony Stetson. If that's his name. This sh this match shit. I'm sorry. Um, and the production file for the show is piss poor. You know, this is on VHS. You know, it's on video back in the day. You know, um, they released the show last year on this on the network. Um, yeah, this was Bushley, you know, I know they don't have the technology back then. The production file for ECW will get better in years to come, but the, the, yeah, it was shit because it looked like someone's filmed the whole show with, on his, uh, her, her or his camera. You miss like a crucial moments of throughout the matches of the shows. It's just like very Bushley in my opinion. Um, and also you... You can't. You don't. You can't see the person got bled. You can't see someone do the blade jam. It's this the problem. Anyway, in, in the end, you got a uh, rock. What's it called? The rocking rebel, um, thrown uh, Stetson. The I think it was a chain. It hit. Um, I think is it Stetson? No. Yeah, I think it's Stetson hits uh Winters. I think I think it's Winters lost. It's bit, yeah, the fucking match is shit. To be honest. Yeah, I think it was, I'm trying to remember. I think yeah, I think yeah, Stetson won this match and afterwards, you know, you know, uh Rockin' Rebel and Stetson, you know, beat down Larry Winters and Winters, you know, stopped the um the, you know, fought back, you know, guys heat back, beat down both Stetson, you know, and the Rockin' Rebel. And that was it. You know, sorry I can't remember who won. It was a stupid match, you know. For one, the match was fine, but you can't really see who bled because the production value is absolute piss poor so moving on to the next match the next match oh uh, this is a cat fight humiliation match holy shit this this is basically a, a bra and panties match we got miss peaches taking on terrible tigra but that's her name it's not tigra you know part of the missus and action in wcw no it was a different tigra you know, because Tigress is basically, you know, part of the, was part of the Nitro Girls in WCW. It was a different Tiger. You know, Tiger, Tigress, kind of like the same name, but anyway, different person. Anyway, the match sucked. Barely, it's just basically just smack, girl, cat fights, just t stripping clothes, and barely any wrestling. It's just like, just a bona fide cat fight. Um, Tigra kind of left the ring, introduced this woman. I found on Wikipedia, I felt this girl is called Angel. Miss Peaches is basically the, the wife of the Sandman. Um, I think, she, uh, they got divorced in later years. Um, in the end, uh, Miss Peaches got victory. Um, Tigra left the ring. And then you got, was it Tony Stetson and the Rockin' Rebel came out. I think, I think it was the Rebel basically ripped the, um... The, the the shirt off this girl in red and that was it I think that's yeah angel um so that was match number three match number four um you got Jimmy Snucker doing double duty on the show he defends the ECW television title again this time against uh, Tommy Cairo this was a D this was an okay match for what it is you got uh Paulie dangerously in Jimmy Snucker's corner 
Jimmy Snooker looks Jack. He was ripped. You know, I don't know how old at the time he looks. Probably in his forties or fifties. He looks in better shape. You know, you know. I think in later years, you know, his physique kind of slumped down due to his age. But like back in the nineties, he's still in fantastic shape. That's not supposed to like a fifty-year-old post look like. Um. Um. Yeah, the match was good. It was a they wrestled a decent, fine match. Uh, uh, but it wasn't fantastic. In the end. Uh, Paulie dangerously held uh, Snooker for the win. He tripped up Tommy Cairo. He rolled up Cairo for the win to the retained ECW television title. Moving on to the next match, that is match number five. There's fucking eight matches. Eight matches on the show. Yeah, it's nine matches because you want you're not gonna find the Renesto Donny Allen match. That was you, you won't find it. But anyway, the next match. This is a Philly street fight. We got the Sandman taking on the Rockin' Rebel. Jesus, a lot of Stetson and Rockin' Rebel throughout this whole show. Jesus, this is fucking runnings. Um, the Sandman, to be honest, he's not the Sandman you, you know. He's got you know going go throughout the crowd, hitting his opponents with the candlestick. No, this is kind of like doing that, like a surfing gimmick because this is under the uh, the Eastern Championship Wrestling banner. Not the extreme banner yet. That'll be in 1994. This was after when Shane Douglas thrown down the NWA World Title. When, you know, because at this time in 1994, ECW was out. You know, really broke away from the NWA. Um, anyway, so the street fight between Sandman versus The Rock and Rebel. The wrestling was fine. Let's be honest, not a great um. Street fight. I saw bare street fights in years, but this was not of it. He had like, uh, you know, one of them throw like, like there was a chair shot, and that was it. You know, you had a uh, Tony Stetson got involved again. You know, he had one match that was against um Larry Winters. He appeared in the end of the uh, the women's match, and now he appeared in this match. Too much, too much of Rockin' Rebel and Tony Stetson on this show. Holy crap, but um, in the end, um, you got uh, Tammy Sitch, the future Sonny guy involved, sprayed uh, Sandman in the face with hairspray. Um, st- um, I almost say Stetson, but Rockin' Rebel rolled up um, the Sandman for the victory. Um, that was match number five. Yeah, match number five. So match number six. Uh, we got, uh, what's his name, uh, Dick Murdoch taking on Dark Patriot 2. Um, this was a decent match, to be honest. This was a decent match. Um, wasn't a fantastic match, but it was a decent match, you know, between Dark Patriot 2 and Dick uh, Murdoch. Um, in the end, Dark, uh, I think it was Dick, Dick Murdoch for, I think it was a, a small package or a roll-up for the victory. Yeah, they wrestle a fine, decent match. The only good match on the show. The final two matches. Yeah, the final two matches. Um, they are crap. They were crap. Um, they- the next match, we got a six-man tag team match. We got Sal Bellamo, if that's his name. Stevie Wonderful and Super Destroyer 1. Taking on the Suicide Blondes, that is Richard Michaels, Jonathan Hotbody, and Hunter Q. Robbins the Third. This tag team match, it was boring. It was boring. I was completely sewn out of watching this six man tag team match. The Suicide Blondes, I don't know. I think it's their answer to the Rockers in WWF. You know, that is uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. I don't know. The, I don't know if they were a rip-off of the Rockers. Maybe they're just the rip-off of the Hollywood Blondes. You know, that is, uh, you know, the team of uh, Steve Austin and Brian Pillman. They were, I think they were a tag team at the time in WCW before they broke up. Um, I don't know. Um... I'm trying to keep it short and simple. The match sucked. In the end, uh, Sal Bellamo's team got the victory. So moving on to the main event. The main event, we got a was it a Texan chain match. This is for the title of King of Philadelphia. 
I think that's it's called. It's basically their version of King of the Ring. We've got Eddie Gilbert with Paulie dangerously in his corner, taking on Terry Funk. This was boring. This was shit. I'm sorry. Not a big fan of chain slash um, rope matches in professional wrestling because they have to touch all four corners of the ring. I hate that. I wish they, you know, just whip each other and win by pinfall or submission. I like that version instead of, you know, you have to touch the all four corners. If one of them do like a bump, you have to start all over again. It gets repetitive. It gets boring. I was completely toned out of watching that. Um, the end was a bit controversial, but I just don't really care at this point. You know, you thought like Terry Funk won this match. Won the title of King of Philadelphia. Unfortunately, the referee changed his decision. In the end, uh, Eddie Gilbert beat Terry Funk. Touched all four corners to win the King of Philadelphia. After the help by Paulie Dangerously, a.k.a. Paul Heyman. And afterwards, you got Todd Gordon and um, Funk beat down Gilbert and Heyman. Chase him out of the arena. And, and Funk cut like a promo thanking the fans. And that was it. So, my final rating for the one and only ECW Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular 1993. I'll give it a 4 out of 10. To be honest, I thought it was a bad show. But to be honest, it was an okay show for what it is. Wasn't wasn't terrible, but wasn't great at the same time. The only match in the good has to be the Dick Murdoch vs. Dark Patriot match. It was a decent match. Besides that, um, you got some okay matches like... Jimmy Snucker versus JT Smith for the television title. You know, and you got um, also the Snucker versus T Tommy Carroll matches. They were okay matches. I don't really put the um, the Philadelphia street fight between Sandman and the Rockin' Rebel. It was an okay match for what it is. But uh, yeah, you have the, um, the outside interference, the run-ins with, um, uh, what's his name? You know... T T Tony Stetson and Son Sonny Tammy Sitch, but it's just whatever. But it was an okay match of what it is. But the bad is the bad. Like the um the first blood match between uh Larry Winters and Tony Stetson. And by the way, they were I think they were the announcers announced they were former tag team partners. Um, that was because you barely see the blood, you know, in that match. Um. The cat fight match, you know, between Miss Peaches and Tigra, that was just shit. The six man tag team match, same, boring. And the main event between Funk and Gilbert in the chain match, but you know, boring again. So, anyway, um, if you got what, trying to attempt to watch this on the network, I suggest skip it. It's not a what a show you have to watch it t every time and the time again. It's just basically a. This is a miss show. I really, yeah, I'd rather skip this and watch better ECW shows, you know, if you've got this on the network. So, anyway, so that's my review of ECW Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular 1993. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Smash like button. Click the bell. Click the, uh, yeah, click the bell. And cl yeah, click the likes or dislikes. Actually, don't, you know, click the likes if you want to. And subscribe to the Central, Central Mind Network on YouTube. Be part of the Century Unit today. Yes, yeah, subscribe to the channel for more wrestling videos and more. And next time, it's still on 1993. So moving on to the one and only Ultra Class. ECW's Ultra Class 1993. Hope it's better than Super Summer Spe Sizzler Spectacular. Man, I can't say that name because it's so fast to, to, to say it. Super Summer Sizzler. Anyway, so this, this is Essential Man Official signing out. That's my review of Super Summer Sizzler 1993. This was a, you can call it thumbs in the middle show.